first slide. Um, this is uh, our company. My, my company is called Adventure, and um, we are doing we are doing e-business, if you want. So Adventure ET stands for um, entrepreneurship and technology, and this is what we do. We are basically we're building new business, and this is probably the same stuff you're doing. We're doing it in a different way and with different focus and so on. Um, but in the end, um, this is our game. Um, coming to my personal background, this is what I actually wanted to skip, but now I tap into that, is um, I don't have a lean background at all. I used to work for a large corporation for Bertelsmann for more than 10 years. Started in 2000 in their first incubator. So um, like 15 years ago, uh, the same things happened to the internet like it's happening today or in the last uh, couple of years. So people are like involved into you know, startups and looking into digital business and so on. I then transferred uh, with Bertelsmann to corporate controlling and um, and investments uh, department, so I was in charge of all the multimedia investments of Bertelsmann, like Napster, BOL, and all the stuff. Then spent some time at RGL Group, television, and then um, corporate development at Bertelsmann, where um, I um, uh, I was in charge and built up uh, their corporate venture capital arm, BDMI, it's based in Berlin, but also worldwide. And now it comes to the to the more more important piece. Um, I was in charge of building the strategy for Bertelsmann, and um, we figured out that education might be something. So this is why I want to tap into that briefly. Um, so we worked on the, on the education uh, strategy and I um, founded a corporate startup called Scoio. It's a startup on education for children and it was a corporate startup, so a co startup within a corporation. Um, it was, uh, it's now Germany's largest e-learning platform for children um, dedicated to the you know, after school market, so the um, afternoon market um, and um, what I want to tell you is that I, like, like in a corporate environment, you don't do lean startup. It wasn't even known those days. So therefore, I know <laughs> what unlean startup means and this is, this is a great experience actually, if you know like also, also the flip side of lean startup. Um, and then, like, Scoey was sold to Disney and I joined an American uh, educational publisher, Houghton from Harcourt, you probably know about them. Um, I was in charge of their innovation fund and I felt like it's not easy to build up startups within a corporation. And a friend of mine, I worked together with him for five years at Bertelsmann, went to Stanford. He did lead startup and said, well, it's completely different from what we were doing at Bertelsmann. And um, he was like building his own startups, uh, portfolio of startups, and I felt like, well, in my corporation, I don't have any, you know, entrepreneurs, but we have assets, we have distribution, we have know-how, and so on, but we cannot execute those ideas. So we cooperated, and um, I felt like this is this is a great idea to have, you know, corporate assets combined with um, entrepreneurial spirit. And I felt like this is a great idea. Um, we founded a company called Adventure together. Um, and we're doing like both corporate stuff and lean startup stuff. And this is what I actually want to skip, but maybe it's, it's kind of interesting to understand that I do understand at least a little um, the education space. So this was the detour and now back to our company. So we are 60 people, maybe 70 now and have a network of 40 um, developers. So we have, don't have developers on board, but you know, we have dedicated teams. Uh, we are designers, architects, marketing experts, business managers, and entrepreneurs. Um, next. Next. Space. Ah, uh, because you don't have the developer. There you go. If you don't do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we are in four locations Berlin, Munich, Hamburg, Zurich. Uh, we did tons of user testing. <coughs> We were founded in 2010 and we, uh, over the last three and a half years we built more than 30 businesses, meaning 15 startups and 15 business corporations. So we have four pillars. The one is, the first is we're building startups on ourselves. We're building startups for corporations. We run a EU accelerator spending 4.5 million for um, startups on, on, on various fields, including e-learning. And we, uh, we're just building up the uh, executive education um, academy. So very important. Um, so we, we do startups on ourselves. Like we are not like consultants. We are <coughs> entrepreneurs and this is very important. And um, we also do this for corporations as I, as I mentioned. So next. 
slide. And this is pretty much the process we are following. And I will come to this in more detail in a little later uh, to let you understand what it, what it means. But just to give you the idea what is important about this, next, please, um, is you have tons of ideas and you test all the ideas. I mean, this is what you're doing like every single day, probably. And then, then you think about the product and now think about the product and then you know, try to arrange the idea around that. Um, and if you have a product, then, then you can build a business. I mean, it's, it's simple, but it's, it sounds simple, but it's not. And um, I want to share with you briefly some lean startup principles. I know we are running out of time, <laughs> so therefore, uh, this is back, this is the Silicon Valley, and this is impressive, and this is why Berlin is not Silicon Valley. There's no such thing as Silicon Valley around, because it's a great network. But the principles, apply to every single business. And next slide is really, this is what you're looking for, all of you. You're looking for, you know, you're a gold digger actually, and looking for, for, for a gold nugget, right? And you feel like, well, great, you have it, but at the same time, you feel like, oh shit, it's not working, it's tons of, tons of mud and, and no gold, right? So what we're doing today is try to figure out how to, how to get to this gold. The first thing about that is to think radical. Um, and I, just a quick question for you. What, what do you see here? What, what is this? How would you help this girl? Any? I will give her a letter. All right. Books. I will give her an e-book. All right. <laughs> I will give her an e-book. <laughs> <laughs> a shelf with only one layer. Right. I would take a book from the lower <laughs> shelf and put it. Right. Next. I would clap and say, "Go! You reach high." <laughs> Next, please. Next slide. So, and this is very important, and I, I try to be very, very brief in, in what I want to tell you today because I think we, we're running into you know discussion a little, little later. I think um, the, what you said basically was to help her. I mean, there is a problem. And you want to try to solve this little problem, bring in a ladder or something else. If you want to build up a really big stuff, a really big business, you don't think incremental, but you think uh, fundamental. So to really about, okay, she is looking for information. So don't forget about the library, forget about how to just help her to reach this. To go one step back and feel like, okay, what is, she, what is really a pain point? She wants access to information. It could well be that you just give her, like, like you said, a library like on, on an uh, iPad or whatever. So therefore, this is, this is really important. Um, so think radical. This is really important and, and it's something that you always forget when you're building a product. <coughs> the second thing is focus. This is probably like your business plan, plan looks like. Um, so I feel like the best product is if you add tons of features to your product. Um, next, please. Um, the successful product is this. So it's called this waiter knife. It's dedicated to waiters because it's everything you need if you're a waiter. And this is extremely important in talking about lean startups. This is one of the most important things that you avoid featureities. Don't add features to your product. Try to, you know, to erase those features on and on. This is extremely important. Speed, the next thing. And I just have like some, some phrases. Um, if, if I was going to ask you if everything is under control and you feel like, yeah, everything's under control, I would say, well, this is really bad. So what are you doing? You're feeling comfortable? It's not how it should be, right? So speed is more important than control. It's, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really into, you know, pushing you in terms of, okay, this is important. And this is also uh, very important. You heard about this tons of, like, thousands times. Be embarrassed if you go out. Don't try to polish everything and to be, you know, to come up with a great product that you can show your parents. No, don't do that. Action, next, last prototype from day one. This is prototype. This is a, a real prototype. Prototype is, it's an idea for a communication system in a, in a football stadium. Right? So don't, don't figure it out and don't, you know, don't make your head up, uh, head up on, on this. Just Scribble it down on the screen how it should look like, then go out and ask people. to get a feedback on day one, on day zero actually. So this is, this is important and this is what you need to do. Talk to people with a very lean prototype and this is the leanest prototype you can do. And you can do it like 10 times a day. Right? So thank you for your make it. This is pretty much the same. 
and test it, and yeah, build flank pages, get operation numbers, business modeling is all everything you know. Failure, the last thing, um, and this is probably what you will experience every single day. Um, this is like if, if you like in, in two years or five years from now, you feel like, okay, what's well, straight? You tell the people the, like the story like I tell you. Well, everything's great. I built my startup in 2010 and it's going straight and now we have 100 people. The truth is you're running into this all the time. And this is good, but you have to adopt to that and you have to be prepared to change your mindset every single day and really, really work with your product and so on. So, fail fast, but fail cheap. Right? And this is actually a compressive slide and uh, the next slide is uh, the last slide. So, which one? Uh, this one. Mm. No, this no. is the last. <laughs> yeah, the thank you actually. Um, so, um, I ran through this. I could, you know, tell you a lot more and I think I'm here to, you know, share with you my experiences on your business. And um, so I was just uh, feeling this, this might be a good um, entry point for a discussion and I hope you took something away from that. Although, I, you know, I'm, I was running through that, so therefore, thank you for that. And I think we are now jumping into a session or two. Yes. Yes. You say that education may be changed in your introduction. Why, why do you think that education has to be an education startup has to be lean. I mean, uh, maybe you think that all the startups have to be, yes. but in the case of education, we can yes. see some specific justification for this? Yes, absolutely. Um, when I built the school thing, as I told you, like it's, um, it's now Germany's largest e-learning platform, highly profitable, very good. How I was, in, I was like in charge of the production. So I felt like, okay, well, what I could do and we're talking about when you talk about education, talk about quality, right? So I felt like, okay, it's about quality, it's about, it should be entertaining. And it's, it was what I was like in charge of, probably, most probably, uh, the world's largest e-learning production that has ever been around. We had, in our peak times, we had 1,000 people on the management, like from, you know, from India, from Tata Interactive, and from Germany, and from US, everything. And I thought, okay, well, you have to come up with a great product. It must be full fledged. It must be high level, high quality, and you have to, you know, this is this is actually the, the curriculum based content, and you need to have um, a testing center also, and we have to we added, add, uh, uh, edutainment and level systems and so on. I felt like, well, this this might be something because the expectations are really high. Um, so I spent probably 80% on, of my budget on building the high-profile content. We launched it, beta launch, we felt like we were very lean because like, we didn't do any co all the courses at a time. I feel like, well, we are pretty, pretty cool, pretty lean. Um, and then we, we launched it, beta launch, family and friends, like you do it. Um, and uh, then we did like a big bang launch. Um, and after three months, we figured out that people are using 30% of the content and definitely not the content I was so proud of. They didn't use the high profile, entertaining, you know, comic-like content. They used the test and training center. And we developed you know, 10,000 test and training center questions. Um, but it was only like 10 or 15% of the whole budget was going into this. So therefore, if I would start it again, I would probably start with one subject instead of seven like we did i would start with you know trying out what people really want and what they really use and not feeling i am you know brighter than the user because i know that what is right and how they should be using it so therefore yes you can do this definitely i would i'm, I'm convinced actually and um and uh, like it's now again it, it, it works the other way around also, because um, Scoby was very successful, so therefore um, uh, it's good to know. But on the other hand, if I started all over again, I would do that like like this. So I would definitely take the lean startup approach. And you can do this. It's everything is possible with lean startup. I don't. I mean, it depends on the defini definition of lean. It could be you know, it doesn't has to be very lean. It, it should be as lean as you need it to be to test the acceptance. So it's a definition of lean. 
what was the thing on the speed you said? You said 4x at 8020, it went a bit too fast. Yeah, yeah. 8020 is like, um, Germans are very proud of, um, they are sometimes very cool because they don't do it 100%. They say, okay, well, let's do 80%, 8020. So well, yeah. we're risk takers because we only like uh, go for 80%. The truth is, you could be doing five projects with only 20% at the time if you do it. If you want to go up to 80%, you only have one project, but you could do four projects actually at the same time to test four different ways um, with only 20%. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, it's, if 20% it's is needed, then go for 20% and then you test out and you get the feedback. And don't wait until you go to 80% and feel like, wow, we are very lean because we're only doing 80 instead of 100. <coughs> you could, every time you can be leaner, this is, this is like, um, uh, uh, you know, at least my experience. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned that you have learned the lesson on this and this experience, but what about the publishing industry in general? Do they really learn, learn that lesson that they never said to uh, work as a real startup company doing this kind of thing? <laughs> it's going to be on YouTube, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> no, they haven't learned it at all. Okay. Not at all. Uh, simply because um, they uh, they are they are stuck with their you know old way of thinking. They are thinking about quality first. And when I when I talk to them and talk to people from the publishing industry, they feel like we're making a great product. People don't buy my our magazines anymore, and they are to blame because they they, they don't understand that this is a great product that they should be spending money on that. So they they don't listen to the to the to the user anymore. And this is a, this is a really big problem. And they are around for like many years and the business model, model changed and they cannot because like it's, it's also a mindset kind of thing, right? They don't want to integrate online and offline. They felt like, oh, well, it was good, you know, 10 years ago, why isn't it true anymore? This is one hand. On the other hand, what happened over the last 10 to 15 years, they were losing, you know, um, distribution and they were losing um, uh, number of copies and so on. It, it went down slightly. So every single year, two percent loss. They lost two percent. So I thought, okay, well, well, how to you know to keep the business running? They do cost measures. So they kicked off, uh, kicked out people. I thought, okay, well, the the return on the return on sales is still okay. It's eight to ten percent, and so we are slightly going down, and we are doing all the cost measures and so on. But now it clashes. And they haven't. They didn't use the time in the past to prepare for that. And this is like my 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 takeaway that it, it was okay over the time, and now they want to you know they want, want to be kind of radical and hire people from you know e business people and so on. But it doesn't work like this. It needs some time until it you know it, it, it really um, it becomes a the DNA of the publishers. Do you have any uh, quick theories on whether B two B B two C is better than B two B? Because your yeah. your most startups, I guess, are B two C. Um, no, they are B two B. As well. Uh, yes, uh, we have. Uh, we are actually we're concentrating on B two B for uh, for some reason because like simply the budget is not that high. So if you compare B two B to B two C, if you're doing B two C, you need to have high marketing spendings actually. But B two B also need a big sales team. Um, no. You only need one client, one reference client. <coughs> so we are always going for one big reference client. And if you have one big reference client, then you go to the next, to the next. You have to have a sales team, but you don't, you know, you just need, you know, a one-on-one -on -one team to go out and do sales. But we never have a big sales team at all. We have a sales team of two or three people at first before we, you know, learn if it's working or not. Okay. And in, in D2C, you, most of the time, you have to spend a lot of, of marketing dollars. Is what we try to avoid. So I would say two thirds of our companies are B2B. Okay, and it's very broad, like what we do. Very good. I have one question. Sure. Uh, in this lean startup philosophy, we are just going very quickly iterating. So we test, we manage the market, we see the results, and then we pivot. And we so, why in this philosophy, why are we are still asking start, uh, entrepreneurs? to build a five-year business 
because it's it's, it's something that, that it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, so, it's a really it's a really good question because like we don't do business plans. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you don't, you don't what, we, what we are doing is we're business we're doing. Like there are so two reasons for that. I, I used to build business plans for eight years when I was like in the control department. So there's a justification for that. So what I can just tell you how we do it. So we have two occasions to present and build business plans. The first occasion is if you um, build a startup and you feel like okay now it's working, then you build a business plan for your investors because they want to understand what's, what's in the game, right? how big can you, you know, grow and so on. So this is the, the, the first reason. The second reason is if we're working together with corporations and we're kicking off a project, like we're building a startup for them, and they, the first question they, they, the CFO asks uh, is, well, well what's, what's the business plan? And we tell them, well, the business plan is a result of our process because now we could do like an Excel sheet, a, a really big, big um, uh, business plan, um, but the truth is you only have the numbers if you did the testing. So you have numbers on conversion, on CPO, and all the you know, major, major points. And we tell them all the time, well, it's a result and not a starting point, right? Mm -hmm. All the time they want to have it at, yeah. at, at some stage because they feel more familiar if they understand what's the market and what, what's on. So therefore you probably don't do it for yourself, but you do it for a stakeholder. And this is why we also do it. You know, because you have to understand how big the market is, what conversion rates are, how the metrics uh, work and so on. So therefore there is a justification as an, as an exercise to do that. But um, it's more important to make revenues. I mean, to us it's, it's the most important thing. I mean, you have to go out and sell it as soon as you can. And then this is the truth. It's, it's really about you know, the revenues is the truth and not the business plan. However, people need it, want it, investors need it, whoever. And, um, and this is why you're part of this game. And this is why you do it. Very simple. <laughs> so where do, you, no, where do you send this? Sorry? Because it doesn't... What you say, you don't say that business plan is useless. No, it's not useless. I mean, it's, we're doing business canvas, for example, right? Yeah. So we do it. And you have to have a business plan at some stage. It depends on when, when you're ready for that. But you have to make up your mind and feel like, how many clients do you need to achieve this? What's the cost? Um, yeah, I understand. But maybe you don't need to do it for five years. So uh, it's like, like it's, it's, it's a small piece. Uh, OK, uh, why, why do you we need really to know? Because in five years, if we are applying this is lean startup cycle, I am. It's impossible to to. It, it's I can I can see for the next year maybe or short term. Yeah. I can have always. It's a, for for me. I think we need to have is a, a life business plan who is always. I know. Is, is that right? Or? Well, I know what you're saying, but uh, if I were an investor. I mean, a, a yeah. different role, and I would ask you a few questions on your business. I would love to know what, what you're achieving for, what you're longing for. Do you want to build a you know, 20 million business, a 100 million dollar yeah. business? Does it, you know, can you expand it into different regions? Um, what does it take to build it? Did you think about that? Did you, you know, have an idea how, what, how many people you need and so on? So therefore, it is important um, for me as an investor to understand if you understand your business. Right? I don't. I wouldn't believe into that. That's. I mean, everybody knows that nobody knows how it's how, how life's going to be in five years and business is going to be maybe next year. However, um, it show it, it would show me if you if you're professional, if you understand your key parameters okay. and how to you know how to manage it and, and and what is the the most important you know driver of your business. Is it like the CPO? Is it the marketing spending? Is it the Salesforce, what, what is it really? And then you can play around and feel like, I would then do it and feel like, okay, well, uh, I don't believe your numbers, but what happens if it, it's, it, it's gonna be worse than you said, and, it's, and I wouldn't twist only one parameter, because like, if it's going bad, everything's going bad. It's not only like the CPO or the number of, of clients. If it's going bad, everything's going in the wrong direction. 
and would just figure out and, and make assessments how stable your business is, for example. And this is, this is very important, and it's very important to, to show if you really understand what the major drivers of, of your business are, because otherwise you're overwhelmed by all, you know, by all the things you have to, to deal with. Okay, so let's <coughs> keep more questions for later, because what we asked three of the teams to prepare presentations, and then Christian will interact with these teams, and so we'll kind of see the tangible understanding of, of the principle that Christian has uh, mentioned through these cases. So, class, would yeah, you start? Yeah, I'm going to sit down and listen. Yeah, you can stand or sit here, whatever. Very good. And, uh, what I will do is I will connect this. Sure. One second. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Uh, really, really no, no, it's, it's just the is long enough? Okay. Yesterday I was with the Spanish, uh, the Spanish uh, publishers who were talking about that. And the people that I was talking with were people who really are lean. But they know that he said to me about my bosses are not allowed. So the same in Germany. Yeah. It's, it's the industry. Yeah. Yes. This is why they are strong. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, so let's uh, use your. Okay, so so you're just talking without presentation, right? So why don't you, uh, from Barshigo first, while Thomas works out the technical issue? Okay, I will do this because it is my backup. Come on. All right, so we'll just quickly change the order while he goes out the presentation. Okay. So, can I start now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, the topic of this presentation is how we, as FanBash, get things done. Yes. Now, I first quickly say again, revise what is your product and, uh, and then tell us how do you make the reality. Yeah? Okay. So, what is our product? Our product is a small device for kids, so they can attach the small device to their toothbrush, is it manual or electrical, doesn't matter. So they can use their toothbrush as a controller in a mobile game or a tablet. So when they go every morning or every evening to their bathroom, they just play games during brushing, so it's no longer uh, something unpleasant for them, and they take care of their teeth. I hope this was clear enough. Okay, so we as Farnbrush, I believe we can make things done. Uh, and I've got something to prove it. For example, uh, we've been on Microsoft Imagine Camp. We've, uh, we have uh, been uh, working with, the, with different kind of people. Uh, we have uh, acquired first round of, of seed funding. 
uh, we've been on Kickstarter of campaign. Well, basically it was uh, an unsuccessful campaign, but it was one. And we are here with Open Education Challenge. <laughs> so we can make things done. Yeah, so we can make things done. Uh, when you think about our project and how we do it, we start obviously with uh, one thing. We meet with each other and we do the brainstorming. So, first of all, we think about what are the main goals that we are going to do with this project. We have, uh, for example, with, uh, with our FunBrush, we've got um, application development, we've got uh, a tool brush technical stuff development, and for example, uh, business side. So we've got, we've got those parts, and everyone in the company has a clear, they clearly know what they are going to do. I mean, Adam is a CTO, I'm taking care of business, and our friends are, uh, are taking care of, uh, for example, uh, intellectual property. Mm -hmm. So if there is a task, everyone knows who should take this task. So if, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's very important to really strictly clarify each of the tasks, because sometimes we have a situation where the task is not so strictly in the forms and, and uh, it's kind of mess around with, with this one. So, so we just need to, to really clarify the, the straight way uh, to, to, to make the task done and it's very important on the first step. Yeah. So as we have our tasks, uh, well not tasking, but uh, we've got the main goals, we divide them into small small task and uh, actually we recently get very familiar with the, with the Redboot uh, platform. So we've got uh, small tasks for everyone and we've got this, uh, how can I say it, uh, a rule that everything uh, that we write on this platform has to be um, written as, uh, um, how can I say this? As something that is is not really general. For example, we don't have tasks like application development. We've got tasks like create first uh, first demo of app by the end of uh, the week or something like this. So we get this very strict task list. After that, we try to figure out how much uh, how much time everything will get, and this is something that. We are really bad at. We generally, <laughs> yeah. we we try to make this. Uh, uh, it's called uh, a roadmap. Yeah. So we try to make this this roadmap and think that. Oh. Okay. So I think that the development process of the of the application will take about four weeks. So I think okay, we're working for four weeks and it's turned out that it's going to take not four but twelve weeks. So basically, we're we're almost always overdue. Uh, but we are doing a roadmap, uh, we have some tasks, and uh, what's the next thing? Well, we just, we just work. <laughs> yes, and uh, I would also like to, to, to tell her about uh, the ways uh, of getting behind the wall, because sometimes uh, when you have some kind of wall or task, you just be in the place where, where there is no way to go around and, and I as a programmer have a, often this kind of situations and I have a few solutions to, to, to way to, to, to just, just work around this, uh, uh, this task. And and, uh, first, yeah, first of all I would say that uh, if, if we have some problem we try to explain this to our friend that is completely unfamiliar with our product or idea. Mm -hmm. So we try to explain this as simple as possible uh, and see if they understand it, under, understand it and maybe they can see what's, what's wrong with our way of thinking because they are completely out, out of the box. Yeah, and, and uh, complaining, uh, the, the, the confronting the, the, our idea and our point of view with the totally different is very fresh for us because sometimes there is a situation where we need to defend our opinion or our, our way to, to, to go with this problem and it's very good because we, we see then the, the weak points of our ways and, and the advantages which we could maybe bring to, to another uh, issues. Um, also I think that um, 
I, as a programmer, always are using the, the test methods because I always have uh, issues which I don't know will be work for sure and I just try it, test it and, and after that I get it back and trying to find another way. It's also very important. And uh, when I don't have any idea how, how to, to, to get to the another way, I just uh, try to, to change something and even change my place of work. I always go to, to another room, go to, for a walk or something and, and, and just try to, to find some kind of different inspiration for, for making this, this. Yeah, or maybe for example, if we get some uh, different, uh, some difficult tasks or, or we have to compare something, uh, our method is to make a, a, really, a really simple table with pros and cons of this solution. So we've got two solutions, two pros and cons, and we've got this uh, so weight of those pros and cons. Let's try to compare it, what is the best way and why it's the best way to do it. Yeah. Also, I always uh, often use the method with the algorithm because I have a problem and I just wrote it down the, the whole steps which I need to uh, take and, and the paths which they follow and, and, and uh, when I see the whole view of the problem, it's easier for me to, 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 to find the best way. And also, um, sometimes I have the situation where I'm so strongly focused on one, one topic that I just forgetting about the, the, the big picture of this, uh, this problem. And yeah, it spent a lot of, of time to, 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 to get into this, uh, this, this problem. And then I realized well, maybe there is a totally different way and I don't need to, to think about this concrete solution, but, but I would just uh, uh, find uh, another way to do it. Uh, the same big picture is also very important for me. I sometimes the trick is uh, I think as a programmer you knows it's called uh, uh, rubber duck solution something. Yeah, so yes. basically I'm sitting uh, over my table and I stand uh, uh, I don't have a rubber duck uh, in, uh, in the original it was a rubber duck but I stand some for example you now a pencil case or something and I don't think about the problem I just try to explain my problem to this rubber duck or something like this. So as I see the steps of, uh, of doing, and I'm not thinking in my head, just explaining this loud, uh, basically it's, uh, the new ideas came out and it turns out that the, the solution was very simple. I just didn't thought about it, I just had to explain this to... And also with uh, speeding up the, the whole programming process, I think it's a good way to, to sit uh, in front of one monitor with two persons because sometimes when uh, uh, two people are seeing the, the same thing on the screen they are just asking questions to each other and uh, when there is uh, some kind of, of, of problems and mistakes uh, it's easier and faster to, to bring it and find it when there is two people. Okay, and I think we really like to walk and uh, discuss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so let's start now and uh, back to Christian, maybe. Well, yes, um, thank you very much for your insights. Um, I think you missed, I mean, I'm a devil's advocate, right? Um, yeah. I can be very. <laughs> yeah, you can be okay. Um, you get a video. Yeah, yeah so you, okay, very good. So I got a good one. Well, um, you like talked for 10 minutes or I don't know how many. You, I, mean, I think in the first 20 seconds you mentioned the pro, like the like your client, and then you didn't at all. You're, you're talking about yeah processes and the product, and not why somebody needs this product. Mm -hmm. What kind of like you know issue or problem you address? Why who's Who's using it? Mm -hmm. Who's yes. buying yes, it? Yes, yes, because it's a totally different subject and we didn't want to focus on it. Okay, we then just focus in mm -hmm. like 20 seconds on the pro like on, on why okay. this product is needed. Why mm -hmm. the world needs this product and who and who's gonna buy it and how much it's gonna cost. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, why the world needs this product? Yeah. In a couple of words, uh, we know and we have some research for this. How did you do the research? Uh, Meeting with kids and parents in their bathrooms. Uh, no, in bathrooms. In 
Uh, I've, got a, I've got a friend uh, that is organizing workshops for kids and parents. And I was standing there and asking uh, parents and, and kids to come at, to, come, uh, to me and uh, did a little bit of questionnaire and some kind of uh, other, I would say, research stuff. So I tell you how I would do it. Mm -hmm. I would go to a kindergarten and watch children brushing their teeth. Because it's live, it's how they do it. I don't believe in interviews because like everybody wants to be bright and clever and so on. So just see, look how they do it and if, if they like it or not. First thing. So go ahead. Uh, we did this once in my kindergarten. Okay, good. And, uh, yeah, and we saw that. Uh, it was the interview, that, not the scene. Just look, look how they do it. Mm -hmm. Look how they do it in the past, how on the daily life. How, they, how do they brush their teeth? And you can even, like, if you have a you know, cousin or whatever, or somebody has a child, mm -hmm. just look how they do it, what kind of issues come up. If they like it or don't like it, if they don't want that, if it, if it, if it takes too long, if the parents are under time pressure, whatever. If they go to bed, it's the same thing happens. This is, this is the truth, this is marketing. You, you should be doing that, you must do it. If you want to be successful, I'm just like, like you know, be selected for some program. Mm -hmm. Right. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, but but also uh, we've been talking with the teacher at the, kid at the kindergarten, mm -hmm. and uh, so that uh, at the kid kindergarten the problem of uh, kids that don't like to brush their teeth actually do not occur because they are having fun together doing this, and uh, this thing does uh, not happen at home because uh, kids are. For example, there's one, one kid and the mother, mother just uh, don't like to stand with the kid and uh, brush together. Mm -hmm. So uh, we try to create with, this, with, the, with our device and uh, this application something like a virtual friend so the kids are not going to get bored, but uh, they, they can have uh, uh, fun together while brushing. Right. And uh, this is why it's important and uh, also because the problem of dental health, uh, tooth decay and cavities, is uh, is very common in Europe. Right. So let me please just jump in. Mm -hmm. um, so, in one sentence, what, which pain point do you address? What's the problem you sol solve? That you children don't want. like to brush their teeth. And we want that's the not, that's not a problem. Yes. This who who has this problem? Children. Uh, sure. Parents. Do they care? My daughter, she's three. Mm -hmm. She has no problem. I have a problem. <laughs> it's me who has a problem because I know if she doesn't brush her teeth, mm -hmm. then I'm going to have a problem. Or she has got a problem, but she doesn't understand it. So you're not solving the children's problem. They don't care. You're solving the parents' problem, actually. If they have a problem. Mm -hmm. So in case they're annoyed, but in the morning they don't. Mm -hmm. The problem is they probably don't have the time. They have the time to I need to go to work. And she's like standing or I'm not doing it or whatever. So therefore, you have to really make up your mind well, who is... Yeah, we know the yeah. uh, yeah. We think that, that it's better to, to, to sh sh show the, the problem in this perspective because mm -hmm. uh, we are focusing on the perspective of the children and we, we think that it's better because when the parents will um, understand that uh, maybe, maybe it's not good idea. Maybe it's you have to figure out what, what kind of problem it is. I mean, if you, I, well, it's... You have two, two targets. Mm -hmm. So one is who's going to buy it, mm -hmm. and parents, and who's going to use it, the children. So therefore, it is it is it's a complex thing because like the parent has a problem that like my daughter doesn't brush her teeth or it takes too long or it's whatever. You have to figure this out, and then you have to make sure that you are the solution to that, and that is. Um, really, like she's enjoying it for for some reason, and then you have to figure out, okay, does it, does this pro uh, product deliver mm -hmm. actually what you what you think it should be delivering? So, for example, does it, does she want to, is she motivated to brush her teeth? Does she come home and feel like, okay, before I go to bed, I have to do it because I want that, or is she like brushing longer than than before, whatever it is? Mm -hmm. so therefore, this is this is the core of, of, of at least from my perspective. Um, the core of, of your investigation to really understand what is your product going, going to deliver and what kind of pain point does it address still. 
really go into the families and don't do interviews. Don't do interviews because they tell you anything. It's not the truth. The truth is really, it's really look what what is happening. Yeah, but I think we've got answer for for that. We Did know you? that we know that kids don't like to brush their teeth. Yes, for, for them this, uh, this, this duty is just, uh, it's not like playing games, and they love playing games. So we are just going to connect those two activities, playing games you and... You're talking about the product, not about the need. The need is for the parents, first of all. The, per the, the, children, the parents want the children to, to, um, to brush their teeth, right? So they need to buy it. <clears throat> But the kids also want to play games, yeah? They want to have fun. Okay, so... Parents want the children to play games. <coughs> I don't want my kids to play games. They're supposed to be brushing their teeth. <laughs> okay. so no, you have, have to answer this, this basic topic. You have to really address it. And really understand if it's really true what you think. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's true, but sometimes it's not. And um, at, at our company, we would say, if you haven't tested it, mm -hmm. I don't believe you. If you read a paper on that, I would say, great. Where is the evidence? Did you do it? Did you go out? Did you spend some time in the bathroom? If you did that, I would, I would believe you. Otherwise, I wouldn't believe you. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's desk research. Or it's what people think or people say. It's not what people do. So this is just very, you know, very, you know, Mean, I know, <laughs> but this I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do anything. I would say, okay, well, as long as you haven't done this, um, you don't understand the market. So very important because like this is what you have to address: why, who's going to buy it, and why. This is the first thing. Then you think about a project, right? What what makes it, and is it really what? Do they like it more, or do they rush longer, or do they I don't know whatever it is. This is what you have to achieve. This is very, very important to me. To me, it's a, it's a fundamental thing. Okay. Okay. So I, I suggest that we switch now to class, and then maybe come back in the end to it and think about you know, exactly how to apply the principles you talked about, lean startup to. But it's just so you know, we see the, the other examples, and then wrap it all up together. Okay, well, thank you very much. Let's see if it works. Fish, Thomas? Is it? I think that is what it works, I guess. Let's see. Let's give it some time. Okay, okay, but it's fine. Okay. Okay, so okay. I'll move a little bit this. Okay, fine. Well, first of all, uh, well, Kike and I, we are the partners of, we have more partners, but we are the ones who are here in, in Berlin. Right. And as I said before, we are focused, what we do is provide help to the teachers and other players in the, in the education where the students are learning in digital platforms. So we use the data to get insight and to give insights to the, to the, especially to the teachers. So let's start, well, let's jump another one, two, two, because this is a explanation, another one. Okay, so I will talk about what we did, how we uh, build the business from the, from the concept, okay? So we follow a very typical path. So we discovered, we discovered an opportunity, then we did a market analysis, then we did a pilot, then we did a customer validation, then we did a real product, that is what we are selling right now, that is a minimal buy our product. And now we are having the first customer, but with this, with this product, okay? Okay, so I will, I will explain each one of the steps. Something that we already did, okay? First one, okay. Well, first of all, in other, in other uh, activity, in other project, uh, with one part of the team, uh, we discovered working with, uh, with educational games that having the analytics of what was happening there, we were, uh, we were able to discover how to improve the game. This was a game, was a, it's a game that is, um, a simulation, and we discovered that some children that we knew that they were intelligent, they got stuck in different levels because this was a game of different levels. And then we discovered, in this case, that they were experimenting with 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 some of the of the simulation that they have. 
So we decided to improve the game, uh, adding a new, a new capability, a new feature of the game because of that. But knowing that, we also we have Kike also in, 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 uh, as, as a friend of us, and uh, he told us that these analytics were very important for, uh, for online learning. Because he, after 15 years working in this, in this space, he knew that it's a real pain for the teachers in this, in this environment to really know what is what's happening inside these, uh, these online uh, platforms. What it means is that the teachers were able to know what is going to have uh, the results at the end of the course, but not in the middle, so they didn't have any chance to really participate in the, uh, to support and help the students. Mm -hmm. So we came to the conclusion that really was something, it was a discovery, but at the same time, it was something very useful and it was a real pain. So what we did first is we, we got, we, we approached to one big institution that was at that moment the, comp the institution who was dealing with the most number, the, the major number, the, I mean the, uh, the most of the MOOCs in a Spanish speaking language in the world. They were the ones who were running all these MOOCs. And also we knew that in these environments where there are hundreds of, hundreds of, of, of thousands of, of students, it was a real pain to really don't know what it was happening over there. So we, we, we found that this was a real solution, a real, a real pain, and they hired us one project. A big project of 200,000 200, 200, euros. So a big project to, to work with that. So what we did then is, can you please pass there? We were, not so we were not so lucky because we were going to win. We were going to, to participate in this project, a consultancy project, to really do a, a tool for the books. But this, this institution was closed. Okay, this is the bad, the bad news of that. But then we were so convinced that there was a real need that what we did is okay, let's do it by ourselves. We don't have this customer, but we are going to do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. So what we did is a market analysis. We researched different players in this arena. We discovered that it was a real hype uh, of using data to improve learning, that there were some companies that they were having big investments, I mean, they were uh, receiving big funds in order to build these kind of capabilities. But then we tried to find out in what position we could be, just to be in a, in a market where there are many players, but they, they have different approaches. So what we did is to find out where we wanted to be in all the, the players that, that, uh, that were at that moment. So we discovered, we think that there was an opportunity in this place, in one, one quarter. When there, there is any more insights, and also to be open and independent on any, in the, any specific platform that they have their own analytics. So we, we thought that this was the right, the right approach. So, please, we follow the next step. So Kike that was there, he did the first mockups. Well, Kike has a long experience in, in online training. He's a pedagogue and also he is a consultant and a salesperson in this market. So he was the, first, the best person to really to start to do something. To, to start the seed of what was going to be the product. So he did some, some uh, power, PowerPoint presentations just to mock up of how it was going to be. And then we developed a pilot. It was a pilot just to, to show some possible customers how it works in online. It was behind, behind this pilot was nothing, it was empty, but <laughs> we could see how it was, it was better than the PowerPoint presentation. So we did that and then this. Kike, visit all these people. These are players in, in I mean, p potential customers. And he went with this, uh, with this uh, pilot and with these prices, <laughs> with the list of prices. Okay, here is the pilot, and here's the price. And he said, okay, are, we, are you going to buy, are you, uh, would you be eager to buy this service? Because this is a subscription service that uh, is going to be paid, was going to be paid a per student and per month. So the business model, I mean the, the pricing was sold and also the, the pilot. Okay? So he talked with all of them and the feedback was very positive. But this was this was not enough. Okay. So what we need is a real product. It was a minimal product. There are there are a lot of features that we don't have here. These are the very the very the things that are, can, can be add, can add some value compared with nothing. Mm -hmm. So we have a customer that already has nothing and we give them something. 
and the difference is huge. So it's what we did. Of course, they, we have in our roadmap lots of features to put inside, but we didn't do it. And it's what we have. We have a stable product of this, very simple, that we only uh, measure three variables, and also we are able to help the teacher to spot with some algorithms where are the, the students that are a little um, laying behind and the ones who need some help because they are getting bored, <laughs> because they need more, more content. Okay. So we did that. So we have customer validation, we have a minimal viable product, and then we started with the first customers. We have this customer running. We are with this to start in a couple of months because this is going to be aligned with one of the training courses. So we are going to provide analytics for some, some courses. And also because we our strategy is to scale up and go grow very fast with partners, with integrators that they really are inside the customers because they are, they are a, a providers that they are already a providing a complete solution to the, to the end customer. What we do is we add this capability. So first we meet and we work directly, directly with the first customers, but our, uh, the way we want to grow is with, with integrators, I mean with partners. So also we are just signing with some, some partners to do that. Uh, we sign with them, but we don't have yet uh, customers with them. But we are already working with an end, end customer. Okay? So now, can you please? This is where we are right now. We follow these steps, and now we, are, we have to do more. Okay? So what are the next steps? Well, now we are focusing right now in Spain, because we want to be sure that what we are doing can be uh, scaled up in other countries. But first, we have to have a very good story to tell. Okay? So now, we are now, we are going to get more local direct customers, because also we want revenues. Okay? This is very important. We are building a local channel with partners. Okay? During the next two months, we are going to be like crazy, running to do this one and two. Of course, we have to prove that the partners are able to bring sales. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to be very close to the partners to really jump to get sales from partners because it could be quite easy to sign to sign uh, agreements with partners, but we have to be able to, to jump, uh, I mean, to, to, to help them to, to do that. Mm -hmm. In parallel, we are setting up a web channel premium. I mean, this is a long story, but this, we want to do pull and push. So we want to, to see that if this is going to work. And then, of course, we want to jump to international channel with partners. Okay? So we did what I told you. These steps are very classical steps, but it worked. Okay? And now we have other classical, very, very typical steps just to local, uh, work with partners, maybe be able to be successful with partners, with the web channel, etc., etc. And I don't know if I have anything else. Yes. And something that we know that we have to do is that. The product is not just finished. We have several features, but all the features are going to be driven by collaborative uh, with the educational community. We are going to be very close to the, to the customers to really new, uh, add new features. But we have one vision of how this product has to be. But maybe in the future they are going to change, but we think that they have, they have to be simple and easy, they have to be intelligent, and they have to be open and independent. But this means that this is the driving forces that uh, help us to know how to improve the project, the, the product, but also very important is to be to work with this, with the community, and also with the customers. So that's all I think. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Now my feedback. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I like your approach, obviously. It's uh, and I like. Um, I mean, the way you, you did that at the stages and that you're focusing on sales, I think this is an acceptance. I think this is, this is extremely good. Um, let me ask you a few questions to better understand your yeah. like, service. Did I get it right that you, you're not building uh, content, so you're, you are completely independent from any uh, LMS? Uh, that's around, right, that's so right. Therefore, uh, you're just a kind of interface to collect the data within the platform, yes, yes. Yes, we have to, to display it in a different way, like a cockpit kind of thing, so that the teacher or whatever. Yeah, yeah that's right. Okay, then observe the students. 
Okay. Okay. Well, what I mean is that when, we, when I say that we are independent is that we uh, work with several LMS uh, provide, I mean, uh, technologies. For example, now we are starting with Moodle. So we, we with Moodle, and we uh, develop a plugin that gets out the data from these, from the data stored in the databases, and then uh, using some standards and so on, we provide what we want to be uh, is very simple and insightful uh, dashboards, mainly for teachers. Also, this information can be used in, in the school, could be used by right. parents or by the students or by the, the, the headmaster. Right. So this is the, this the, the thing. So you're, you're, you're like using an interpolation score or whatever it is, yeah. and you integrate all, all the data. So can That's you, can you um, combine the data in terms of from, from different platforms yes. and yes. build one, you know, one yes. this uh, the excerpt or, or yes. from, yes. from this? Yes. This was one of the pages. Okay. This was one of the pages. Is to, to have a, a common language, let's say, right. to uh, gather the information from different places right. and to compare, a, 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 let's say, metrics in a homogeneous uh, manner. This is one of the, our value propositions. Right. And what do the teacher do with the data? Okay. Yes. The product that we have already right now, what they do is, they see, uh, they can see in one class different groups mm -hmm. and he can spot in real time which one are need some help okay. and which one are this is the one. And then he is able to act <coughs> and go deeper, drill deeper in the in the tool so he or she can know more of what is happening. Right. Um, I, I like this a lot because like this is going to be the future and this is what technology can provide. I mean the, to to like offer different uh, Learning speeds or whatever, so that yes, right. like the, the, um, brighter people or they adopt and that's the way they, they can do different tasks and, and you have it is the, the, MVP, the, MVP, the MVP, but there is more that is how to get know what is happening with the content, how right. the, the students are dealing with the content, and also how to ad adapt. Yeah. Is the point what I think is very important also always to think about is not only on what the product can do in the future to add like more features. But I think it's very important to understand the teacher, the user, what he needs. And the teacher normally, and, and I know what I'm saying, he wants to have a, um, a he wants to maximize his, and not all teachers, I know that it's always a, like very mean when I, when I said it, but they want to uh, um, maximize and optimize their spare time. They want to make it as, as handy, as, as easy as possible. And this is, I mean, talking about, okay, they can, teach the, the pupils in a different way is the one thing. On the other thing, they are delighted if you provide something that helps them optimize their time and their effort and so on, and to standardize. We receive, we receive that feedback. Okay, well, because this is very important not to, you yeah. know, not to come up with something, okay, well, it can like do its work even more complex or dedicated to something just to go down to the, you know, to the very human kind of motivation. And this could be, <coughs> make it as easy and, um, Maximize the spare time and make it really, really easy for them. Right. Because like this is what, what um, people and, and people want. They want it, you know, very easy yeah. solution that that, that helps them, you know, uh, be very efficient. Let's put it this way. And this is what what you shouldn't, you know, lose um, when, when when you think about features. It should be a feature that doesn't improve the product, but improves like the teacher's needs, and this is very important, that you don't lose this track, yeah. and that you like add more and more things, make it more complex, and people just feel like the, the product gets worse the more you add. This is a danger, actually. But apart from that, I mean, if you're, you're, doing, you're making money already with that, with the two Well, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay. But, okay. Yes, people give you money um, uh, Safe. 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 value. This is, this is important. And, yeah. um, and so therefore, um, uh, I, I like that, and, and actually, uh, I think the more LMS are around, the better, or the, the higher the need for your product gets. Because, because like, yeah. um, if you if you combine various various platforms, then I think the value of your product rises. So therefore, I, I, I like that, okay. um, and um, yeah, and, and I mean, in the end, it comes down to to like your. Mm -hmm. You know, supporters in terms of okay, if, if you if the MOOCs 
pick up and, and all the other platforms, then you are in the game, right? Mm -hmm. But it's, it's like, the flip side is it's, it's it takes some time probably until it's... No, but, but also, I mean, we are, think, we are knowing where is the money right now. We want to go to the whole education, but we know, right now the money is in incorporation, that they are already using these kind of things. Yeah. We also know the challenges that we have in front of us is that we are competing in other, in other areas in this, in this uh, axis that I showed you with players that they have a lot of money. I mean, one of the players already raised in total around 100 million, 100 million dollars in other areas, okay? So we have, they leave us a lot of, a, a, a very big, bigger market to, to work on that, okay? Wow. So we yeah. need the challenges that we need uh, technology, and we also we have to be wise, and wise just to, to just to, to cover the places that are left, that are very important. Yeah, actually, the more platforms are around, the better, like the the, the value of your product. So therefore, yeah. the platforms can only build one cockpit and so on. But you, if you if you manage to combine two or three platforms yes. and have your output, um, you, know, you know, aggregated, um, then then you're gonna gonna be a, a, a value. Then your product, and this is going to be. I think this is going to be the, the toughest piece that um, that they have to like be successful to, to make you successful. This if they're not successful, there's no need for the product. So therefore, you're kind of dependent on um, on other people's success. Right. That's right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, President Subu. Yes. And. Um,
For the uh, collaboration function, we've built a whiteboard that's live, that's versatile. It can accommodate any kind of content. It's absolutely live. Students don't have to copy the blackboard. Whatever the teacher writes goes to the students instantly. It's versatile, it's collaborative. It's not one way. It's better than any other whiteboard that's been built. We manage the uh, coaching function by providing a suite of pedagogical tools which provide the teacher to actually achieve personalization at scale. For example, I as a teacher can find out what a student is doing at the other corner of the room, give a personalized input to him, make him improve. I can take an answer from one student, show it to others. I can launch live polls, uh, find out and analyze the responses and then tailor my teaching accordingly. I can divide my classroom into groups, get each group to present, share a whiteboard and present to the rest of the class. I can create flipped class videos and then get students to actually learn before the classroom and use classroom time for something more productive. So we've built a suite of pedagogical tools which are far more powerful than any pedagogical tools that exist today. And last but not the least, we've built a ma learning management system around it. We initially thought we should not be building LMS features because there are lots that exist. But as and when we piloted our product, we found that we were actually sort of overlapping with LMSs and a lot of clients said, why don't you also build an LMS on top of what we have? So that's what we have. If you go to the next uh, slide, we are actually at the core, we are live versatile whiteboard. At the next level, we are a plaza of pedagogical tools that are built on the whiteboard. And finally, we are a learning management system around it. And where we are as a company, we are, we, we are actually more than three years old. Next, 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 please. Next, next, <coughs> yeah. We are more than three years old. We got the product right in the fifth version. We fell, 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 and finally we got it right. We are now have the sixth version, which is now live with over 10, 20,000 students. We are now have a, last two quarters, we clocked revenue of $350,000. We are now profitable. But it took us two and a half years to get there. Um, and we did tons and tons of pilots. We, 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 we were inside classrooms, we distributed devices, we found out how teachers worked, we found out how teachers do use the, used, used every screen in the product. We understood classroom interaction between teachers and students. There was a lot of chaos. So a lot of new uh, needs sort of came in place and now we believe inside the classroom we have a fairly good product. Now the question for you is, two questions for you have. The first question is, we believe, uh, should we have got here, gotten here quick, quicker? I, I believe we should have gotten here one year back. And secondly, how can, how can we accept that from now? First answer yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, and to give you, to help you throw some light, I can walk you through our product development process if you think it's relevant. Uh, yes, I do. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. This is, this is it. Uh, I, I wanted to just quickly run by how we build the product. So, so I have a separate presentation for that. Okay, so we have a core team of five people, uh, me and my co-founder, and we have three people who are, who are fairly senior. The five of us sort of uh, are, are our think tank. And, and, and what we bring, what each of us brings to the table is I bring in the vision, the, 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 the creativity behind new features, and I also have a technical background to help with the design. My co-founder also brings the vision and the market relevance and the perspective around that. Our head of engineering brings a technical perspective. Our product manager, um, uh, sort of brings the uh, brings the process and, and is this really relevant kind of a kind of perspective and our marketing person sort of does the validation. Uh, the five of us sit together and we create a roadmap. The roadmap is a result of three things. The first is novel features which clients would not have articulated. So for example, the iPad, if you went and asked a customer five years back, do you need something like an iPad, you would have said no. So we have in our mind a set of novel features which we believe a teacher will not be able to articulate but which will be relevant. That goes into the roadmap. Whatever feedback we have from live classroom trials, that goes into the roadmap. And finally, clients ask for incremental features. So if you ask an iPad customer, he would tell you, can I open Word on my iPad? So those kinds of things. So these three are three distinct things. One is completely creative, novel, that's where the innovation comes from. Two is uh, what we actually get from live trials and three is what the clients ask for and all of these three go into a product roadmap which we maintain in Asana. Uh, we have a, we follow the agile development methodology. We prioritize the roadmap into sprints or releases. We try to stick to three weeks, three week releases and, uh, and, then, and, then, and then we release. 
So, so that, that's, the pro, that, that, that's, that's the process that we have. Um, we are now expanding fast. We are, we are getting, we have the need to expand the product portfolio now. Um, now the question is, how do we maintain agility with a broader portfolio? And uh, how, do we, uh, um, how do we ensure the same quality happens by scaling the team? We now have a team of seven people. So. Those, those, those are my questions. Yeah, thank you for so much. Um, yeah, I think uh, when I looked into your slide and you said, well, you're adding you know, three innovations for three, I don't know what it, what it was, I felt like, okay, well, um, this is too complex. For, I mean, you, you should be you know, targeting three innovations at a time. I know what you're saying because you want to do the best of the best and so on. But um, I think this is the reason why it took you like uh, three, uh, two years because you didn't concentrate on just one issue. And what I haven't seen and probably figured out all the time is really uh, the, it always comes to the same kind of thing: what's the pain point and who's gonna gonna use it, um, and um, are they prepared to use it? Because um, uh, I mean, it depends on which kind of classroom you were um, addressing, but teachers. Most of the time, most schools are not like from the technical equipment. They cannot use technologies whatsoever. So therefore, um, I think this is, is an important part. And to really understand again and again um, the, the need, what, what is the pain point? What do you want to achieve with your program in terms of me as a teacher? How, what, 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 what kind of value do you create for me? What kind of like problem do you solve with that? So three things. One is, but I have too many, just one. I mean, this is what I mean. It's, you always so, talk about three, three things. Just, just try to, just to nail it down to one. So one, how can I, how can I make my classroom experience? How can I achieve better learning outcomes? I guess that, that one thing is too it, generic. But, but do, so you, if do, I do you think, do you really think that this is, if you ask me as a teacher, do you really think that I care about this? Is this my, you know, my, my pain? I mean, if, if I'm teaching, I'm not, I'm only asking, I'm not, I don't have the answer, but if I'm standing in front of a classroom, so, and I feel like, well, if I, if I can, can, could make a wish, what, what would it be? I mean, this is going to be the, the biggest issue of the, of the teacher. And this is something you should be addressing with, with one feature, actually. This would, would be the, the ideal world. And not, not to add too many things at a time that you have to throw away or that you, that you have to pivot. Um, and this is my, at, at least my feeling on that, that you're, you tend to be complex. You tend to, you know, to, to, to tend to come up with a with a great solution, and with a you know full fledged solution and so on. I think it is. Yeah. So that is just just yeah. just to walk you through. Version one of our product just did one thing, which is collaborative education inside the classroom with control for the teacher. We thought that was going to be our core, but our teachers came back to us and said, "We no, let, let me just interrupt you. So, collaborative working. Why is it good? Um, it, it's not." No, it's not that it's a it's a value of itself. I mean, it could be that it, it is, but from a teacher perspective, why does he want to like the the, the pupils to collaborate? What, so what the teacher felt uh, she, uh, the classroom was better engaged, and she was in better control of learning outcomes. And we were able to establish and that. And this, this means what? What? Why did, did it help him or her? I mean. It, it's a class she, she was able to material. She was able to cover material faster. Mm -hmm. She created once and was able to reuse across years. Uh, she 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 felt uh, and she was able to measure learning outcomes as and when the class was delivered, as opposed to wait till the first test. Right. And this this is what she she expected also. Yes. From you. That that she so that. So this was one thing that excited the teacher about using a product inside the classroom. This was this was in some ways he articulated it uh, openly. In some ways it was sort of a latent need. But once he used it, she realized the benefit. Okay. But then she came back and said, uh, "This is the core, but I am using different products for different things. Why don't you build these functionalities into the product so that I use one single solution?" So so our product also got heavier and heavier. Right. It's also, so that's why it's become a USB now. It's, it's just that you don't have to use 20 different apps if you're, if you're using an iPad inside a classroom. You just use this app and you can use any content on top of it. So that also has become a USB now. Right. All right, yeah, I got you. If, if it went like that, that you concentrate on one thing and added features to that, then it's a good thing. That's exactly what we're doing. I, I doubt it. 
first um, because like you say okay our USPs and so on so you're you're always talking about many things uh, well it's just a feeling from, from what I've like figured out I would think you should be you know trying to be you know more concentrating on on one thing rather than on to, to add too many things at a time I think this is just it, it's getting too complex I think in, in the long run um, it's just a feeling again but I feel you tend to you know to tend to come up with three sets three innovation three I don't know what it is and and I would you know I would um, I recommend that you try to come up with one, always with one, and then add add more features to that to, to one point, not to to address too many. To add the one as opposed to adding the second and third. Yes, because like it is, it is, it, it needs more discipline to do that than to to build it really big. is is easier than to strip it down to one thing. And it does not mean that you have to stick to that, but you have to then really make up your mind and. and understand what's your goal and what, what is really, you know, the, the number one feature, whatever. Um, and it's just, just, just a feeling, but I think this is, this is important that you, that you, you know, drill it down to, to this point and to really understand why you, you do that and why the teacher needs that and wants it. And then, indeed, you're saving time. This is my point. Um, because I told you about the school thing and I started like, like you do. I feel like okay, it needs to have this because they expect this, they expect gamification, they expect you know, everything. And I figured out, well, actually it would have saved me really a bunch of budget and extremely a lot of time if I try to lay it down to one of to really one thing. And it's um, this is this is just, just just my advice because like then you can really tell people in, in one sentence what it, what what's also product and then if you ask back and be like okay yeah it's it's all the good for this and that and you can track and you can whatever but you need to have one one USP at least in your face. So so you first of all I just want a clarification. Is this cycle of, of updating your roadmap you said you do it every three weeks or the updating is not, the release happens every three weeks. We stick to a three week release. Uh, so cycle. every three weeks you have a release? Where and then the, road, the roadmap gets updated as and when we get ideas, or as and when we get feedback. So it's a continuous it's process. It's a continuous process, but prioritizing the roadmap into the next release happens every three weeks. And, and then where do the users come in? Where, where do you interact with the users? The, 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 the second part, right? There's a whole bunch of features that come from fixes, the, the feedback and fixes is, is, is an integral part of the roadmap. So whatever we shipped last, any feedback goes into the next, uh, goes now, into the next release. But, but that's feedback that's initiated by the users. Where do you go out to the users and do that research and understand, you know, identify what the, the big thing for the next release? Every time we do a release, we always deploy in a live classroom. We see, we observe the teachers, we observe the students. And that's when the feedback comes. Now you're in a transition point, right? Because they're actually moving from classrooms to to online. We're not moving exactly. We're not pivoting. We're just adding another product line. So that will continue to exist. Do we have an example of the roadmap with you? Yeah. yeah. I, I I have the Asana itself. So because like the thing is really um, you need to. And this, I'm absolutely with you. You need to digest what you do and see if it's accepted or people like it or you know use it at all. Otherwise um, it's getting too <coughs> complex. So just so, uh, so I think uh, all of the teams have been using uh, Red Booth because that's a platform we use um, for monitoring the, the, the incubation program. Uh, if you're not familiar with Asana, so Asana is in a way, a similar, it, it's also a, a kind of a collaborative or team-based uh, project uh, to management and task management uh, system. So, so, so let, let me just take towards the example. This is this is the uh, ro roadmap that we maintain, right? This is this is this is a laundry list. It's supposed to be a laundry list, but we prioritize. Yeah. We ruthlessly prioritize. We, it doesn't mean that we build all of them in three weeks. Yeah. So if you if you see, uh, there are there is there are three kinds of. Features in the roadmap. So there is one which um, 
which are, which are obviously incremental features. We right now have audio video on iOS. You don't have it on Android. So that's that's the natural thing that a client would ask because there is the, the, the uh, some clients use Android, some clients use Apple, some clients use Windows. So this is a natural thing that a client would ask. So this is sort of natural into the roadmap. Graph. For example, it's a, it's, it, it's a feature that takes time to build on our whiteboard. But we have at least five or six features who ask for it. Well, I perfectly understand. Um, I think, well, if I look into this roadmap, it's so, a three to three years roadmap. It is, it is. It is. It to is. be very honest, it is. Yeah, so th this is what I mean. Um, but we're not building all of this in three weeks. I, we are, well, we no. will, this will go through I, I, I know, I know. I know. I, I'm just saying that you have a, you know, a vision of your product already in your head. You feel like, oh, I need to do this and that and that and that. But you have to figure out which, what is really important and what is really needed at a time or put it under a theme. It could well be that you have to adopt your roadmap in, like, to feel like adding features because like the engagement is not high enough. So put it under the theme, feel like, okay, what can I do to, to um, uh, trigger the eng engagement, for example, the student's engagement, or the, you know, what, whatever, like the, the cockpit, uh, the, whatever it is. Because like you're running into a, a, a into a massive into a massive thing, and if you do have to do adoptions, then have to push the, the roadmap again, and the, your developer is going to say, well, it doesn't doesn't fit into that. I know what I'm going to do over the next 18 months, and you have to uh, get this feature into that because like you figure out now it's more important to 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 add this at the time. You're getting to like my impression is you're getting to, you know, to, you jam at, at a time. How do you say no to a teacher who says, this is very important for me? I can push her, I can ask her, why, why is it really important to check the user? You, you don't know if you need that. You, because no, I said some of these are because teachers have asked for it. But you don't listen to what they ask for, you watch what they do. You, so which? if somebody's to ask for everything, is you get the Homer Simpson card. Exactly. Do you see that? Where he asks for all of the things and he was like, he's not the designer. So you need, as the as the designer, you need to decide what is the most important thing. What which is, is what the, we do, what which, is, which is exactly what we do. We prioritize. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't From what I see, it's not like you do it. It's it, it, if the teacher asks you, oh, well, I need a graph. You you add a graph. And in 12 months from now, nobody's using your product because it's getting too complex because you added too many features because everybody told you I need that. This will be great and so on. You come up with something that is simply not usable anymore and this is a risk because nobody knows what it's good for anymore this is just a risk i mean uh, but it's it's it, it is there because like you're i think you're thinking too much into features and and, and you might lose the core of your of your solution um, by adding too many things and you like and you believe the product is getting better and it's getting worse you remember my night you come up with a knife like that. You want to, you want to serve a teacher or a waiter who needs only this. You come up with a knife that is not, not useful. It has all the features, but it's five, pro, it's five different products instead of one. And this is a big risk. So how, how, how do you balance I, I mean, on one hand, I can really understand your argument. Yeah. Uh, but on the other yeah. hand, how do you handle it when you develop a product and somebody says, well, I'm not going to use it because we use Android tablets and yeah. you don't provide video on, ta on Android. So, so how do you balance that, uh, you know, the, 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 the need to keep the product simple and, and clean with, you know, when you get a very strong demand for a particular yeah, I feature. Know, it, I, and I know it's not an easy answer to that. Yeah. I mean, we, we have to cope with it all, all the time, right? And the question is really, do people don't need it because of that? And, or it, can you afford to, to leave out a platform? Um, I, I, cannot, I cannot tell you from this. The question I have is, is it a different product or is it a, you know, a, a different package? You can you can um, add to that in terms of okay don't this is a product for you know for managing the classroom and you have a special you know cockpit product to add to that that um, that provides with all the graphs and all the metrics and so on so therefore try to split it up 
instead of aggregating everything. This could be a solution. But but it's not an easy one. I'm absolutely with you. It's just just the risk and it's just just the risk to get overwhelmed by, by so many features. And sometimes just say no because like, only one or two teachers want that. Really then, right. you, yeah. then you have to leave it out. And um, because like some you know, some requests are so ridiculous that they don't they don't really understand what they're asking for. There we Absolutely and politely you, say no. And you have to like you know, decide what is what is useful and, and actually not not necessarily the teacher because you're the expert in, in this sense, right? And um, I mean, I'm talking about the iPad. You like you, you guys are using the iPad. If somebody would have said me, told me, well, the iPad is going to be very successful and it has no USB um, uh, interface and nothing, I would say, well, it doesn't work. It does because like some people, you know, feel like okay, there's there's a big a big value. Uh, 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 by using the, the iPad, so therefore I got, I'm going to buy it and leave, leave things out where I would say, okay, well, this is important. And as a, as a user, I would even say, okay, that's a, without this, I don't buy it. And, well, if it's out, I, I do buy it. So therefore, um, don't listen too much uh, to those guys, actually, <laughs> because like, it, it really overwhelms you. Because, right. because and, and you, you need to also incorporate, this is exactly what, what you said, incorporate user feedback to that. Do they need that? Do they want that? Do you have, a, do you have an issue with, with engagement? Which is, most of the time, this is, this is a, a going to be an, an issue because people are not engaged. Um, and, and, and you have to you know, adapt your roadmap, as I said, towards engagement, for example, whatever it is. Um, so, and, and you need to, to have the, the headroom to, to do that, and to op, uh, adopt to that. This is, this is really important. Otherwise, you, you, know, you work and work and work. And um, for, forget it. You, you leave out uh, or leave behind the, the user. This is this is crucial. At least one, I don't know, the ten minutes here. Thank you. So thank you. <laughs> so uh, so you see the the three, you know, obviously three out of the seven teams now. Uh, maybe first of all, let's have a kind of discussion. See if anybody has some comments or some questions from the other teams. Uh, trying to relate your conversation with those teams with their products and, and so uh, yeah, I think this is this is important because you you insisted on the too many features mm -hmm. and and I'm curious to listen to, to to the other teams that are in the process uh, also of, of, of thinking on this and on many